Hi everyone, we're back again. Hi guys. Nice to see you. Today we're talking about one of our very, very favorite perfumers in the world, uh, Bertrand Duchafour, who is, I would say, is possibly maybe the greatest living perfumer. If, the, if there were, it's, it's quite subjective, I know. Yeah, quite subjective, yeah. He's, up, he's up there, isn't he, at the, at he's the sort of top end he's of, the, certainly of the one list. of the, He was one of the first perfumers that I got really interested and really excited about and, yeah. and, and started to kind of follow and, and track down what, he, what he'd done. But I think one of the reasons we're doing it as well, often when you see a bottle of perfume, it, it says Chanel or it says Dior yeah. or it says Gucci, um, which doesn't really explain who made the perfume. No, not at all. Because there, there is a designer. Uh, it wasn't like Mr. Deal or it wasn't <laughs> or it was Miss no. Chanel who, who made the, the, the fragrance. There is someone whose uh, skill and passion and art went into yeah. making that product. And you can then often trace that person over different brands. And as you, I think you'll see here with Bertrand Dijon for you see his fingerprints. Yeah. And uh, even though they're different lines and different budgets and different styles, you really see um, his fingerprints. Yeah. And I thought we'd do this video just to give a, you know, a bit of um a bit of praise to the designers, yeah, we, the noses. Very, and very few perfume companies credit these perfumers. You know, there are, there are some exceptions. Frederick Mal, for instance, yeah, the has the perfumer's name on each yeah. of the bottles. Um, but really, by and large, they go uncredited. And, yeah. and in fact, it makes life harder for you as a consumer because you could say, oh, I, I'm not a big fan of the perfumes of, I don't know, Penhaligans. To take an yeah. example, they're all made by different people, so yeah. you know, smell them like a composer. Think yeah, yeah. John Williams writing for Steven Spielberg. You get a flavour of, of a composer by listening to the various films. Yeah. They'll all be slightly different, but yeah, yeah. you know, it's recognisable. Mozart. So we've um, we've got three each. We've Little selection. Three uh, fragrances. Shall I go first? You go first. Um, we should we should point out at this stage that we've not discussed these. And luckily, as it turns out, we've brought three different perfumes each. Yeah, but it could have been a disaster. We, I mean, we have similar tastes. We could have just brought the same <laughs> bottle six times, which but is fortunately, we haven't. Possible. No. So I'm gonna start um, with a fragrance oh, which is, which is really um, special to me. I would say this is the fragrance <clears throat> which got me interested in fragrances. I first smelt it uh, within this very organ loft here when uh, Joe was introducing me to the world of fragrance and he bought some interesting things Tom Ford uh, Extreme, uh, Caron Pour and Home, yeah. uh, a couple of yeah. other things I can't remember. I thought, wow, these are really interesting, really slightly unlike. They're obviously better than a lot of things I've smelt before. And then you showed me this oh. and it was completely different, really blew me away, it was so it? original, so transportive, so beautiful, so unusual. Um, it's Timbuk2 uh, from L'Artisan Parfumé. Um, so Bertrand Duchafour has made lots of fragrances um, for this house, but this is one which uh, has really uh, stood up to me. See, it is inspired by um, the women of Mali um, and that's so beautiful, isn't it? That bottle, just all alone. And a ritual which involves uh, lots of incense. So there's yeah. a lot of incense, and I think in in, in a lot we'll of the fragrances uh, we've selected, there's incense throughout them. Oh, it's it's really really special. I've got any more cards. Um, this it's as well as incense. It's also vetiver. Yeah. Um, but the big note for me, which not everyone goes on about, for for me is Wonderful. the mango, which just gives yeah. it this really yeah. kind of tropical freshness and brightness and it's just this explosion of kind of exoticism and it's also papyrus in there which is oh, this wonderful. really interesting kind of grassy note but I will I mean I've only got this much left and I've already got one other bottle and I'm going to be buying a, a, another one because this is definitely a, a, a fragrance I never ever it's want to It's a keeper be and yeah. I mean it's worth pointing out as well that this is the this is the older formulation yeah there, there are new bottles of this now that, yeah, that black sort bottles. of black bottles and it's not the same fragrance, I would say. I, I, I don't think. I don't think it is. Um, it's yeah. I think it's lost less of. It has less of the mango, less yeah. of the bright kind of sparkle, um, and it, it seems more of an out-and-out out, uh, vegetable fragrance. Quite austere fragrance. now. Um, worth worth looking out for these. But this you, you can, can get find them. loads of them online. It's not difficult to find. So do search it out. Right, what have Beautiful. you got? Um, well, I think I mentioned Penhaligons, and I think I'll start with Penhaligons actually. Mm. This is a fragrance called Sartorial which is right there. Sartorial is basically inspired by the cutting room floor of a Savoy tailor's workshop. So the combinations in here are, are really incredible. You've got beeswax, oh, that 
That's really good. You've got beeswax, you've got um, you've got the fresh sort of fougere notes of lavender. But that's fern. the thing. It's, it's it's such an interesting fragrance because in, in one way it's a traditional fougere, mm. but on the other hand you've got beeswax and this kind of metallic quality. There's a metallic sort of scissor. Or yeah, exactly. Something it's, like that. It's amazing. Um, and also, the other thing is to say, very, is very we, we've gone from you know an, an ancient kind of spiritual ritual of the women of Mali to a Savoy tea. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the same name. And he's, I mean, another great thing with Bertrand oh, is that really he good, isn't it? really he, great lavender. Oh, and, it's beautiful. He, I mean, he's fulfilled the brief because Timbuktu is a wonderful, evocative thing from another world almost. Mm. And for Penhaligons, the very traditional, the very traditional British house yeah, of the establishment. Elegant. Yeah. Elegant barber shoppy yeah. associations. He's absolutely captured it. This is not his normal style at all. No. And if I smell that out of nowhere, I wouldn't necessarily mm. recognise that. So original. But he's, isn't a, it? he's able to capture it and say, yeah. oh, well, yeah, okay, Taylor's yeah. Workshop. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. Yeah. And I just I love the fact that it takes you to a place that has nothing to do with your morning sort of cleansing routine. It's nothing yeah, to yeah, do with. Yeah. With fresh sort of soapy shower gel, but it's but it's or big it, oriental. But it's amazing that it still comes from that tradition. It, sm it still smells like a kind of a fougere, but he's completely reinvented it. He's he's basically taken it and plopped it down in the middle of German Street somewhere. Yeah. Amazing. It's absolutely wonderful, and you know it's it's clean and fresh, but it's it's kind of spicy as well. Mm. It's got enough interest, I think, to draw you in and make you keep coming yeah. back and finding new things. Certainly, when, like, I remember I've worn it and people said, oh, what's that interesting spicy fragrance you're wearing? And I was like, oh, that's interesting, because like, I, I don't think of, you know, it's, it's lavender, beeswax, I don't think of it as being spicy, no. but there's ginger in it. And uh, I think what people mean is, it's interesting. It's got something yeah. that jump, jump, jumps up and, like, I think that's what people mean rather than it being It's not spicy. spicy in the sense of cumin and saffron and those, no. and those guys. But it's instantly arresting yeah. and captivating. Again, you can find this very, very easily. I would, I would advise um, personally, if I, if I were you, to again try and find slightly older bottles because I find this one now, again, isn't quite what it was. Um, but it's so beautiful. I've only got a little dinky bottle here, but you could quite happily get a huge one. Right. Should we move on? Next, what do we have? Right. Next, we are going to uh, Italy with the house of Odaitelli, uh, which is a house which um, a British for is very closely associated with. And this is Baum du Doge, um, uh, which I guess means the balm mm. of like the ointment of the Doge, as in the Doge of Venice. Um, and so, as the name suggests, we get a real feeling of uh, East meeting west, so the, the notion of kind of these trading routes coming from the Middle East Beautiful and bringing bottle. spices and incense and myrrh, and alongside that we have uh, Italy and, and Venice, mm. um, and we have particularly this beautiful, beautiful oh, Sicilian kind of orange uh, note. <sighs> that is so beautiful. And in wow. Let's give that a spritz. There, there's so I think much that spice to going on. There's lots and lots of a poppinax, isn't there? Ah, that, that yes. kind of sweet myrrh, which is really warm. Um, it's so comforting, isn't it? And it goes so yeah. well with that orange. With that, and it's a real, it's almost like, it's oily orange peel. Oh, it's, also, oh, it's so edible. I mean, this, yeah. this makes me think slightly of Christmas as well. Yeah, I mean, it's got cinnamon as well. Yeah. I, think, I think it's the cinnamony... Um, quality to it. Wow. Cinnamon and yeah. spice. I mean, dare it's I say like it. mulled winey kind of. Yeah, oh, like absolutely. Bit, there must be clove in here as well. But I, I, I hesitate to say it, but there's something here of the great classic Shalimar in terms of that orange vanilla yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, combination, yeah, 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 or Abbey yeah. Rouge, Abbey yeah. Rouge even, you know. Mm. A, a, mo a modern interpretation, mm. of course, but. but the, what, the thing I really like about this is I, warming. you know, I really like uh, resinous fragrances, incense-y, uh, balsamic fragrances. And so when it gets to the summer, I'm always a bit disappointed because I think, oh, I can't wear those big balsamic yeah. things. But actually, this is something which... which I'd wear that in a heartbeat. Which is great to wear in the summer. It's invigorating, it's bright and yeah. zesty and beautiful, beautiful. And a bit more body than, than a sort of typical summer summer citrus. Uh, yeah, but yeah, much, still, much more so, yeah. Still all the interest that you can yeah. have. You wear that long into the evening and just... Relaxing in an armchair somewhere. Right, what have you Beautiful. Got? So, you, well, you mentioned incense. So, we're in a church right now, as you can see, and you can't smell this, but it's actually reeking of the incense from, a lot, yeah. from an earlier an earlier occasion. Now, this is perhaps the reference incense fragrance, incense Avignon. So we're obviously transported to to a dark, dusty church 
very in France. Catholic. It's, it's very, very Catholic. Catholic. Um, hail Father. So, box is just quite a little dinky thing. And then inside we have this wonderful little bottle. There it is. And this really is just pure incense. Yeah, it's a real, as it, you're saying, it's sort of a, a solo floor in that it's just, you just get out of That's what it out. says on the tin. Uh, frankincense. God, and initially it feels austere. Very austere, isn't, isn't it? it? You know, it's, and for me, it's, it's not a church like this. It's a really dark, gothic church. There's almost no light. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah. Um, it's very I mean, moody. I mean, this is, this is, yeah, it's very dark. It's very... It's very badly behaved, isn't it? That's that's someone that's sitting in the confessional. Yeah, you've got a lot to confess. <sighs> this uh, this is not a fun incense yeah. at all. I but mean, it's so is, it's so beautifully yeah, done. It's such a moody fragrance, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's, this is a real. If, if, there's lots of fragrances when you know I've said if uh, Bon Dieu is quite invigorating. It's kind of bright and zesty. It makes mm. you feel summery. This makes you feel moody, and you just yeah. don't want to go and sit on your own and and not talk to anyone. Sit in the corner and read Goethe. Yeah. Or be That's really contemplative and yeah, just, yeah, absolutely. just really kind of w with your own thoughts, but really. But it's 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 quite radiant as well. Like similar yeah. to Timbuk too, I think this is one of the the perfumes that I say that Bertrand Duchamp does that that almost glow a little bit. Yeah, it feels like it has a heartbeat. God, it's moody stuff. It's so, but it's so different. Yeah. Even though we said, oh, these are all incense fragrances. That's he, completely. He really different. knows how to treat it, doesn't he? Yeah. Right. My next one. Very good. What have we got? Yeah, so I'm, well, I'm going back to the house of Lassan Perfume. I, there were lots of his which I could have brought. I could have brought Alude, I was thinking ah, of bringing or Mon Numero Dix. But uh, the one I'm bringing is, I think I put it, hmm, I put it kind of alongside Timbuktu in, in terms of you know what a masterpiece I consider it to be. So it's Zonka. Yeah, um, great stuff. And what is interesting is that we've got incense and vetiver, mm. exactly the same as Timbuktu, but the result is completely completely different to me. Um, the the only other key note, or the big note to be aware of in this, is iris. And, I mean, it's so, so different. So that iris becomes really chalky and really calm. Oh, that's so good. But re re there's there's that's a so slight good. floral edge, but it's the real lipsticky, chalky iris. Yeah. Oh, it's really, really beautiful. And it also, get, I get this kind of n almost nutty feel. Yeah. Some, some yeah. Like. Um, so, uh, Zonka is the official uh, language of Bhutan. And so this, um, it refers to Tibetan uh, monks, yeah. I guess. So it's got this um, this feeling of prayer, of, of kind of, uh, of a monk in, in, in a cave, bur yeah. burning incense and being in prayer. So it's, and again, it's interesting because we've just been talking about another um, sacred scent, if you like, but they feel completely different. They're polar opposites, aren't this, they? This, this feels quite austere and somehow intensely Catholic, whereas this, this feels very beautiful and quite tender and more contemplative somehow. More spiritual as well. It's, yeah, yeah, it feels it's it's more, more heady. spiritual. I love that iris. Yeah, it, is, iris yeah. it is that wonderful funereal ostrich yeah, feathers iris, yeah. isn't it? But with everything else, everything else rounding it out. Yeah, it, you still get the. the, the vet, it's, I think it's I feel the vetiver in this is very different to the vetiver in Timbuktu. The, the, the vetiver here yeah. seems to add a bit more depth and roundness. Yeah. Whereas that's it's not as grassy green as um, Yeah. Oh, I mean, really total genius. Yeah. Total genius. I and mean, again, uh, easy to find. Do we, do we yeah, again, think online that these I've, are still going I've well? not. So again, I've got one of the original bottles of this. I've not smelt the new black bottle, so I can't comment on whether or not I think it's been reformulated or changed. But I, I would say that these uh, La Saint Parfumé are available a lot yeah. um, on, online in some of the discount retailers. So do have a uh, check out for them. The other place, if you're in the UK, is um, TK Maxx. Yeah, they're very often you see full, because yeah. they've been uh, redesigned and re-released in the black bottles. These ones are readily available at about yeah. a fifth, a sixth of the price in TK Maxx. So if you have to be there, really great. Um, looking for some new pants, go and go, <laughs> go and go and check the bargain um, basement uh, perfume section and yeah. see if they've got some of this because it's. And well it really worked. is criminal that they're in that section of the yeah. shop because they, I mean, they don't know what they have. They yeah. really don't know what they have here. Right. So, so we're so we're on to we've your got the last, last one. one and our final. So completely different. This is quite big. <laughs> so for the house of Amouage, which is um, an Omani house, 
he has come up with, with a sort of celebration of their 25th anniversary called Jubilation 25. This is the box. It's far too heavy, so I never take it out. But inside we have this lovely... Don't drop it. We have this lovely bottle just here. There was a shower gel here, but I used it all in one session because I smelt really bad. Um, so this is all about the sort of treasure trove of Middle Eastern ingredients. Everything you can think of is in there. We've got fruity notes, we've got blackcurrant, absolutely. We've got blackcurrant, we've got... Um, pop we've got plum, a pop and axe, yeah. oud, lots of Which resins, lots smell. of spices. I mean, it's the treasure trove of everything. Oh, but I somehow think, works. But the other a thing charm, is, with I this, think. it's when you when you if you look at the notes list for this, it's absolutely enormous. It's chaos, and you think it's, it's going to be chaos. complete carnage. But the result is so elegant. It's, I mean, you also get oud as yeah. well. So there's, there's, there's a good dose here with oud. Um, but it's not. It's not. It's neither the kind of barnyard oud nor is it medicinal oud. It's something in between. It's yeah. Kind of soft, round. Um, it's a middle. Oud. It's a sort of middle player, isn't it? That just binds. But it things. is. Oh, you are immediately transported to the to the Middle East, far more yeah. so than than any of these other fragrances. There's such a kind of depth and roundness. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I, I mean, it, it it just smells incredibly expensive, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it smells. It really regal. does. And it's it's the sort of it's the sort of thing where yeah, I think when we talk about being transported away, it's the sort of thing that I love because I would not normally wear these fragrances, and once upon a time I didn't mm. like these fragrances. It's interesting as well, and now I've, I love them. I've had you know I've had a bottle of Jubilation for about uh, two years, two and a half years, and I don't wear it very much. I tend no. to I tend to go. I've got this other amouage I tend to go for, Memoir or Interlude or Opus Six, and I don't wear this so much. But I now think I, I feel worth drawn revisiting. Back isn't to it? it it really. It is a masterpiece. And on one hand, it is distinctly Amouage, it's Omani, um, it's Middle Eastern. But you can still get some of that Bertrand du Chauffeur. You get his DNA again. in there, yeah, absolutely. And right. I, you know, I remember vividly the first time I smelt this, and I spent about four or five hours just deciphering yeah. every note. It, you know, it's a really long, long journey. Yeah. The dry down is, it sort of goes on forever, and you're constantly finding little twists and turns different every time you wear it. So we it's should also say, it is also the most expensive um, yes, adult it is, selection. So it? that is about, is it about 210? 210, something yeah, like that 210 yeah. pounds for, for a 100 ml bottle. Again, available though. Discounts. Yeah, yeah, there are discounts available. And also, you know, with that sort of fragrance, it, it goes a long way. Yeah, two squirts of this. Yeah. And you, you know, you're but done. this is samples of this are readily available online. So if you want yeah, to experience it, yeah. I would say, whilst you might smell it in shops, uh, a scent of that kind of complexity and beauty, you won't, if you go into a department store and spray it on your hand, you can't really take no, it in. I would no. try and find somewhere online which sells samples, there are lots of them available, so you can really experience it and yeah. enjoy it. You have to home. wear it for a day to really appreciate what's going on. So, right, if you had to choose one of these six, one of them, you had to get rid of the rest, just have Get rid of the rest. Um, I think... Timbuktu, for me, probably. Although I, I've not brought it. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to say, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say uh, Timbuktu. Um, yeah, it's, you, it's, you, it's you so could, special. You could argue that it's it maybe doesn't have quite the depth or the depth or the complexity of um, jubilation, but it's so beautiful. It's so yeah. original, oh, and it makes me feel so good when I when I spray it. That's the thing. That on a really basic, fundamental level. Mm. Like Dan said, I feel good when I smell that. It brings a smile yeah. to my face. I've got something it to makes me spray. sigh with relief. It is. So there's something so beautiful in the world. From the very first spray to the, the end of the dry down, it's absolutely it's enchanting, it? sparkling, really transportative. Oh, you can wear yeah. it in the middle of winter to brighten your day up. You can wear it in the middle of summer on a hot day because of that mango absolutely. and the brightness of the incense. It really won't. There's, ne I mean, there's never a really time when this thing beautiful, isn't, beautiful isn't a, just a joy to wear and a masterpiece. So, I mean, we've just got to say. A big thank you to Bertrand Dish for for bringing. And I have to say, this this video could have been eight hours long. Oh, easily! It's so yeah. prolific. I mean, other easily. big names, things we've omitted: Chipre Palatin is one of yeah. the most amazing. Yeah, sort of lots more. Cheaper, um, lots more of artisan stuff. Um, his own, you know, his own things like Project Renegades, yeah. where he's just had a perfume named after him. Yeah. Um, Worth exploring. Look, look him up, and and you'll see the list of stuff he's done. It's immense. Yeah. But we love him. we're going to leave you and we're going to go away and smell ourselves. We're going to try ourselves. and get round to his, his place. 
one weekend and Just spend a weekend, weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, 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 perfect. I would love that. <laughs> anyway, well, thanks for watching, guys. Go out and try these. Do. Smell them, sample them, enjoy them, love them. Until next time, happy sniffing. Bye.